Okay, it's now recording. She said, don't tell anybody I'm there, she said. <laughs> I think we're nearly back. Oh, it's okay. Lovely. Thanks, Simon. I've heard someone to save me, save me a couple of times already this evening. Um, so we're going to record this. We'll stick it on the Redway Runners YouTube page with all the other wonderful films and um, exciting blockbusters you can see on there. Um, I just want to say thank you to those who have helped tonight. As with most things that go in the club, I stand at the front and you, you think I've done all the work, which is great for you to think that but actually there's loads of people who help with all of these things behind the scenes putting this together some of them it will become clear if you don't get a chance to ask a question or you don't feel you want to put your hand up during the course of the evening feel free to drop us an email to the usual Red Bay Runners address which is rrredbayrunners.com push the space bar it'll go forward <laughs> arrow down why is it not going We, I, I did say we'll finish at 10 o'clock tonight, didn't I? <laughs> <laughs> I think they're doing it now. Oh, that's it. Yeah. That's the next one. Yeah, that's all right. right. Okay, so the agenda tonight is Chairman's Report, which is me talking, which means I'm going to take up an awful lot of the time um, doing that. We have an update on England Athletics membership. What we'll then do is talk about last year's Charity of the Year, and we reveal the amount that we raised last year for the Club Charity of the Year. Um, following that, we'll vote for the Charity of the Year for this year. So from the 1st of April 2023 to the end, uh, to the end of March 2024, we've got a Treasurer's Report, which is from Morris. Unfortunately, Morris has decided to go running this evening up at Silverstone around the racetrack. Um, so you'll get me talking even more for that, I'm afraid. Then we'll do the election of officers, which is the committee members. Um, while we do the count of the... Um, charity vote. Michelle's going to tell us all about the amount of vast amount of money she spent on first aid equipment in the club and give you a quick overview just so you can see what we've been spending your money on. And then we'll do the results of the charity vote, a chance to take questions and a thank you and any final comments. So hoping to get that all done by nine o'clock and if I push the space button we go to the next slide. <laughs> um, when I was putting everything together I was thinking about what sort of year it's been for the club. The last previous years, it was all about the COVID years. Um, when I, I look back on the last year, I think it's the year the dust settled from the COVID years. So we all know how the club operated before COVID and we had all these various things going on. Um, we closed down, we felt what they closed down for a year, two years, and it feels like last year the dust has settled. Um, and... We got a lot of things back, but they're all just slightly different. Some of them, the Sunday runs weren't as many people as we used to have, but some of the other runs were uh, picking up some really good numbers. But and a lot of the stuff has come back, you know, that we had before. Um, some things haven't yet, and you know, maybe it's a chance to have a refresh. But it just really felt like it was the year where things changed. But for me, for the club, and since day one of the club, we've had four key principles. It's been about having fun, being a social running club. Value for money, still five pound. And um, the club is here for the benefit of the runners. So you know, they then for me, those things for me have been there from day one. And you know, I think last year we still managed to maintain that. Generally, you know, obviously we'll always have some issues and some bits and pieces, or people won't think everything's operated as they'd like it to. But you know, I think I'd like to say ninety nine percent. You might have a different view, but you know, ninety nine percent of the club, ninety nine percent of the year, I think you know things have gone pretty well, and we've still stuck to our principles. So some of the things we've done through the year, there's a much more detail than what we've done through the year in the report, but I've just pulled out some of the highlights. So um, club trips, we did three club trips during the year last year. Normally you do two a year, but just the way the dates fell, we had three club trips. We did one to cover two half marathons, um, to Fingerola and Malaga um, in the first half of the last year. That was also followed quite quickly by the club trip to The Hague. Um, and it was a really popular trip. I think it was um, 63 went people and a lot of the people were attracted by doing the Zuda Park Park Run for the Z, that elusive Z. Um, we had a trip to Warners down in Hailing Island and seven, um, 12 people travelled. And then there was the trip to Krakow for the Park Run and the Night 10K. 
Um, for me, very poignant trip, and um, we did the, Aus the Auschwitz visit as well. Within that, that will always stay, you know, as part of the memory. And I think that will be for everyone who did that that trip. We've also done a whole load of park run road trips um, to Banbury, House and Hall, Kettering, um, Pocket Park Run, and to Rushmere Park Run. We did that on New Year's Day, so it's been a load of park run trips. And also we've done some special park runs with the Tutu Park Run and the Big Green Food Bank Park Run. So our club trips, you know, have been fairly health healthy during the course of like last year. We do have a club trip this year to Gdansk in September. If you fancy Gdansk in September, get yourself booked up. There's a park run there as well. Um, uh, so come along to that. This slide for me is quite an important one behind the scenes. There's a whole load of stuff. You often, you, a lot of you will just see the club runs or you'll see the club events that we do. And um, there's a whole load of things that go on behind the scenes that generally are um, hidden away. Um, but again, they took a lot of, um, take a lot of work to for them to happen um obviously we had the agm last year which is six people attended we got slightly more this year if, once we do the final reckon i think it's about mid 30 35s or so england athletics produced some england athletic standards that they asked that all running clubs um met and we um we did a lot of work in the club to meet those standards michelle led on that piece of work to make sure that we followed all the standards and we were able to get a tick for the eight sta eight standards wasn't it eight standards that we had to meet and have them documented and we did all that work last year again that was unseen a couple of posts went on facebook just to say we'd done them we started we started doing our decathlon happy hours happy hour at decathlon once the shop closed where there's 10 percent off with decathlon and chance for people to come in and meet us um, and we particularly try to base those around we're doing beginners groups so that the new beginners get a chance to come along and see the club kit see kit in the shop as well and just ask any questions they want to perhaps when they're not running or talk to some of the other one leads as well um, before COVID, we used to collect all the run numbers for um, picking them up off Facebook or people sending in emails. Um, Lottie very kindly said she took an um, activity to do an automated Google sheet for us. So the run num uh, run leads now just go on to on their phones. It's dead easy. I do it on my phone. It's dead easy. After the run, usually I own coffee. I just open the sheet, put the number in, and it's job done. It gives us all the records of, you know, how many people have been on runs, which runs are popular, which ones are working, you know, and all that sort of thing. It's not that we ever close any runs because there's not, not enough people on them, but it just gives us that information, what we're getting on runs, where it might be, you know, maybe new runs will be needed, where the interest is as well. Um, last year, again, we had two um, two coaches go down to the London Marathon and at least 45 people um, from the club took part and the coaches had over 100 people on them. They sold out last year, which they didn't the year before. Our new balanced performance kit um, launched and we already had that in place, but last year we moved it online so that people could buy, would buy the kit online rather than everybody telling us what they wanted, us writing out sheets um, and then collating it all, collecting the money and sending it off. Um, it was all done online, so people ordered online directly with new balance. Um, we introduced a policies page onto the club website. I mentioned the EA standards. Well, that was ultimately in that's have all our policies that we had. We had a number of them already around safeguarding, leading runs, child protection. Um, you wouldn't believe the number of policies we have as a club. We brought them all together onto one page on the website as well. So they're all together. If you want some really even more boring reading in an AGM, find the policies page and just read some of those. But some of them, you know, yeah, well worth reading. If you're one leads, you do, you know, need to um, read them or leading events and things like that. Um, welfare officers, one of the things from England Athletics is they recommended we have more than one welfare officer. So we've increased the welfare officers in the club to four. I'm not going to name because I forget. Michelle, Rena, Elliot, and Ros <laughs> um, are our four welfare officers. And we include the information on welfare officers. It's on the website. Whenever anybody joins, it's in the information in there. It goes out to the beginners groups. And we try to sort of make sure everyone's aware of the welfare officers. Hopefully, I don't think they are kept too busy, but they're always there if needed. Um, our Who's Racing Where page, we used to collate manually with people telling us, also moved online so that people could tell us about their future races and put those into a um, a Google Sheet again, which we then take once a week. And Beth and Debbie produce a weekly Who's Racing Where, which also goes into the club um, weekly email and goes on our Facebook page. Um, during the course of the year, we purchased a, a defibrillator and various training items as well for the club. I'll come back to those in much more detail later. And we also purchased two event shelters during the course of the last year. 
So a lot of things go on behind the scenes, and they're just a few of the things that I pulled out for this. Um, obviously, um, Steve leads um, our club races and events, and we had our five events last year. Beat the Barge, sold out and raised over a £1,000 for charity. First and Relay, we had 51 teams taking part in First and Relay. Um, we did our fourth old money run with 120 people taking part in the five or 10 mile options. MK24, 850 laps, I think, were completed over the 24 hours um, for the event. And Santa Santa sold out with 200 places. So all of our events were pretty busy, as we expected. I mean, we're not talking massive events in the size of London Marathon, but all of them are really... Um, being successful and selling really well. We were worried last year how well some of the events would sell out as we picked up from COVID. Um, and they're starting to pick up and, uh, you know, hopefully we'll do even better. We're always learning from everything we do on the events and everything else. You want to add anything on events, Steve? No, no. no? Okay, fine. <laughs> <laughs> Stop heckling. You always find the troublemaker quite quickly, don't you? Um, also, last year, we did a number of special event runs during the course of the year. We did two charity breakfast runs, um, raising money for our club charity of the year. We did the drama run and 63 people took part. Do you know what? I was thinking about the drama run. I was trying to remember what the drama was about, and I cannot remember. Somebody will say it, and I will remember. Um, uh, just, hey? You get you all thinking now. I will remember. We did our, for, um, our triathlon run, where you do three runs in one day, part one. Um, a one mile and then the handicap run we did that twice um, numbers weren't vast but we are thinking about doing it again it's a consideration um dom's buying spending more money on timing equipment so maybe it'll be a good opportunity to test that timing equipment when we get that so maybe we'll do it perhaps we'll try and do that again this year we did a green national run called the final furlong um which is at a horse racing farm up in gayhurst and that was very successful did a review of the year run and we did the normal Christmas run with the animal and Steve did the treasure hunt run for us as well. So doing a number of special event runs, always good fun. Take a lot of time to put these special event runs together, but you know, they are great fun when we do them. So if you ever see them, do look out for those. Um, all our courses, did a whole load of courses in the club on a whole series of different things. We had move up to map. These are in no particular order, the list of courses, uh, move up to a marathon course, Beginners courses, I think we are, oh, you wrote down how many courses we did last year, um, but I, I won't find it straight away. Um, need for Speed course, we did a couple of those. We had a move up to 10K, for those who've done 5K, to move up to 10K. We had an Improve Your Running course, which is debated during the year, we'll just call it Improvers course, or Improve Your Running course. We're doing another one, as we think, in September. Um, we had your Improve Your Running Performance, which is a track course, which was something new for us to try last year really successful and we also did a strength and agility um on track four week course as well so there's a whole load of courses going on um simon tonight's come straight from a beginners group um we're starting more beginners uh, more beginners in september and some of the other courses will be coming back in september and um, we're already talking about a move up to marathon course coming soon so you know a lot of things go on in the courses all the time continually we got ourselves in the news Mostly for all good reasons, I think, during the course of last year. Um, we were on BBC Three Counties interview um, on New Year's Eve about the year of running. Um, and that was on the park um, at Park One. I think that happened. Was it Park One? A day of Park One, New Year's Eve. Um, we got on Three Counties Radio to talk about the awards that the club had got. And we went on the new BBC News Online for the food bank section that we did as well. So not vast amount of news last year, but you know we're in the, we we got out there. It's getting harder to get on the news these days because there's less printed material, so it's much harder to get you know ourselves out there. But um, we still got a few things on the news. I mentioned the awards. We were up three awards last year. Um, we got runners up at the Mayor's Award. Um, is that one you went to, Anne? Yeah, um, Anne represented at the Mayor's Award. Um, we also were runners up at Club of the Year at the England Athletics South East East Volunteers Award. We were runners up. That's pretty prestigious to get into the England Athletics Award. Um, so really pleased we got to that. And we were winners at the Sport MK Club of the Year Award in December as well. So all, um, all very positive. And I, for me, it's nice we get rec recognised uh, for awards for the club. And, you know, it's nice for the club that we, you know, get that recognition and it's all the work that goes on for the club. Um, during the year, we helped charity as well. Last year, we donated the 4,000... 
£988, MK Acts, which was the charity of the year for the previous year. At the AGM last year, we voted for Willem to be our charity of the year for um, the year that's just finished. And we also, during February, took part, as lots of running clubs around the country did, in the food bank run. So we collected uh, food donations at club runs, uh, the three like, Milton Keynes Park runs, and at the cross country. And we delivered five car loads of food to um, the Milton Keynes Food Bank. And they told us there's over a thousand items there, which they were really grateful for and really pleased. And they're hoping we'll do, be doing that again next February. I'm sure we will if the um, opportunity arises. I'd like to think we would do that again next year. Um, training, a um, bit more detail on the training. One of the questions that came up last year at the AGM is about whether the club had thought about buying a defibrillator um, for the club. And now the costs have come down on defibrillator. It got us thinking um, from there. And we had a, a discussion at the next committee meeting. And we decided what we should do is deliver our own in-house training. So the first step was Michelle um, got herself on a train the trainer course for delivering first aid in the club. Um, and we then also bought a whole load of equipment um, in the club so that we would be... Um, the right level of provision in first aid. There's masses of um, first aid equipment now. We've got defibrillator and we've got a number of training um, goals um, for training. And we now started to deliver training course. Initially, we're doing it to the run leads, but we're also going to be doing it to the key people who run our events. And then hopefully we can roll it out to a lot of the more key people in the club. We've already, Michelle's already delivered to um, first aid courses and we've got another two booked for later this year one in july one i think in october um so that's going really well and it's the sort of thing we've invested a lot of money in and i think it's something very appropriate we do invest money in as well yeah is there any possibility is there any possibility of speaking to athletics get someone in house that can deliver alert at birth. Um don't know. Um Denise, if you're on there, can you write down an action point to ask England Athletics that they will they normally offer i mean i haven't looked to where the when i did um, recently they were online and also the leadership in running fitness courses they were by zoom um and i did mine at milton king's athletics track so they do do them fairly local but i did mine a while ago so i'm not sure if they still do them local or not but they try to do, go around various places i mean we could end up with us just booking a hall which you still have to pay for the course the person would so um I can, have, can have a look at it, certainly. Yep, no, fine. Um, we have also funded leadership in running, Lurf and Surf, our leadership in running fitness courses, which is a one-day course. It, once you've done that, if you if you want to, you can do the coaching in running fitness course. And um, people who are run leads and we think are going to put, give back to the club, um, we normally will fund them doing those courses. So if anyone wants to become a run lead and wants to do the leadership in running fitness, all the coaching and running fitness, you know, do come and talk to myself or Michelle who looks after the run leads for the club. Um, I talked this slide already, really. <laughs> I jumped ahead of myself. Um, investment, we've invested in the first aid, um, trained the trainer, we purchased the DFib, we replaced a whole load of the equipment, um, first aid equipment, and we delivered the first of the, um, of the first aid courses, so a significant investment in first aid. Um, which I think improves the safety of the runners, hopefully, because, you know, run leads will be trained or event staff will be trained. It's the start. We're getting there. Um, we've done a few more things on socials this year. We've had a Bistro Live evening, which was organised while I was away. So um, not as successful as it should have been. So, no, it was very successful. And loads and loads of people went. Um, the Christmas party at Brew House gave us some ideas. Um, so, you know, a lot of people came so we can develop that even more. And we've done a couple of socials at Spoons as well. We're still sort of finding our feet on socials because we've not been finding uh, some of the events haven't been as popular as others. So, you know, we're still trying to work out what people want best for that one. But it's coming together. And we shouldn't forget the cross country season um, last year. We still had 
smallish numbers, but um, we still managed to stay in Division One for the Cross Country League, um, Chiltern League, and that will be starting again in September. Um, people haven't tried the cross country, give it a go. It's not easy, it's, it's hard work, but um, many people who take part in it uh, to help us score and stay in Division One. Um, so there's sort of things we've done, and I said it, I said it earlier, and I'll say it again. There are so many people helping in so many ways, um, from leading runs to club events. But there's also a whole load of people that work unseen in the club and then go unnoticed, and the club wouldn't be as successful without them. So you know, for me, um, I want to say thank you to them, particularly. Um, what are we planning going forward? Um, just try to put down a few things that are going on. The club will develop as we develop during the course of the year. Ideas will come in, some will take forward and some we won't. But some of the things that we're working on or planning, we will, we will planning to implement the greener, uh, the brighter Redway runners. We were pushed into this one a little bit because of, um, in China, they're not making all of the club kit any longer. So um, we're going over to the new brighter green and that's all being launched now. And sales have started. I think we're up to about 70 sales so far with a new green kit. We're reviewing and hopefully going to improve our beginners courses. Glenn and Annette, who are on, the, on there, so they can't tell me. Um, they're looking at our beginners courses and see how we can tweak them and make them even better for the future courses. I'm hoping to implement those changes in September. Um, we obviously, I've already mentioned the first aid training. We're going to have the further first aid training for the run leads and the key helpers in the event, particularly like the event staff. Um, we're launching our new podcast. The first one has already gone live. Um, Simon and his little group of about three or four of us were not working on the podcast and in doing some interviews, putting them together. The first one's gone live. The next one should be going live in the next week or so. Um, we're trying to do, we're trying to do one podcast every month, I think, is our plan. Um, we also want to introduce Redway Runners news stories as well. We've done one of those. It was on Tony Dalgleish. Um, I know Michelle, who's doing Michelle Bella, who's doing those for us, has got a three or four in the pipeline that she's developing. So they will go on our news page and we'll tell you on the Facebook page when they're ready. So if you've got a story that you want told, Michelle will write it for you. She's a um, wordsmith or, you know, likes to write people's stories. Um, the last two years, I've mentioned this under plans going forward. At the moment, behind the scenes, you use Love Admin to sign into your accounts to book events and everything we do. Love Admin is moving to a new version, which is a complete rewrite of Love Admin. And every year I mentioned it, it's not happened. Um, I wasn't going to put it in the slides this week, but in the last month or so, they've started to talk to us about um, migrating to version two of Love Admin. And so I think actually it might be coming this year, the next version of Admin, which uh, Love Admin, which I think is going to mean quite a bit of work behind the scenes to get us um, up to speed on it. But like any new system, it's a bit of pain in the short term, but hopefully in the long term, we'll get a better system out of it. Um, we we're obviously going to deliver a full program of races and events and all the events we're doing in the club that I mentioned earlier are all in some state of um, development to be launched. Some are on, two of them are already on sale. Um, more than will be coming. And one of the things we're going to be doing is a new green world map. So what we want to do is if pe as people get their new T-shirts, we want people to send in their photos from all around the world to us. And we're going to do a global map with a pin. You'll get to click on the pin and see that put whoever um, in Saigon in their Redway Runners T-shirt. Saigon still exists. In Paris with their Redway Runners T-shirt. Um, and we'll be putting out the details in that in the next day or so because the new T-shirts are going to be arriving in the next few, next week or so. Um, so I think it's nearly been three weeks since the orders started. So that's something else that we're doing at the moment. Quick advert break, because I like to do a quick advert break. Steve will tell me if I don't do this. Um, we've got to Catherine, not to Catherine Open Evening coming on the 7th of June, 8 or 9 o'clock. Please do come along to that. I mentioned to Catherine Evenings. Um, MK24 is now open for entries. Redway Runners, you'll get a discount of £5. So you get a £5 membership back. It's a no-brainer. Enter. If you already entered, you get the Redway Runners nice um, red T-shirt. You enter today, you get the nice thermal mug instead. And Lisa's very kindly put you a leaflet so you can go away with the website address on your on your, um, on your your chairs. For those online, you'll find it on the um, club website. All about it. First and Relays now open for entries. I think if we're doing 40 teams... 
Um, I think we're a quarter of the way um, sold out already. So, you know, it's it's launched quite quietly last week, but, you know, a number of entries have already come in for that. Um, the new kits available to buy. I think if I mentioned this or not, new kits available to buy. At the moment, the club has agreed, the committee agreed that we would do a reduction of £2 on the T-shirts and vests. So if you buy them, you, they're the cheaper prices shown online. I think probably... Um, we haven't agreed a date, but I think it's going to be sometime in May where that two pounds going to stop. And hang on, <laughs> that two pounds going to stop. And um, and you know they'll go to the normal price. Yes, Lisa. Is the printing still going to be done by the ladies who make the Because the lead time, yeah, and I I know that you know it puts me off all the new kit because of the lead time on. How long it takes to, uh, I appreciate it, you know, and I'm all for supporting local businesses and all, all that. I'm, I, I get all that, but you know, when I was doing beginners and you're having to put in your order for your t shirt by sort of week four, stroke five, to make sure that you've got it for graduation and then you develop an injury, and, and that's how you end up with loads of t shirts and getting collected and things. Yeah, well, we don't have that problem of not being collected anymore because they're all posted directly to the people. Um, it's three weeks from order to delivery. When we're doing beginners, we put an extra week in because we we do get higher orders just to make sure that we got them in time. Because sometimes that, especially when we're having problems with stock issues, um, we we're finding we're putting the orders in. They weren't ha having them. We had to order them somewhere else. And what she doesn't like to do, and understandably, is order them every day they come in. So she only orders once a week. So if you order on the, the Monday, it might be on the Friday the order goes in. So that's already five days wasted. If she put, I don't know when she does it, but on the Friday the order goes in. They won't arrive till the Tuesday or so next week. They've then got to be printed and they then get posted. So they're there after they're there for the three weeks. So it does take a while. Yeah. No, no, I mean, it's a fair question. You know, um, I can ask her again if she can reduce the lead time, but I think she does want to guarantee that the time she says they will arrive in the time that you know she commits to because we have only one small business for her, you know, um, in you know, all the stuff that she produces it or you know. They produce. Okay. Uh -huh. um, so order your kit. Um, London Marathon coaches are available to book. Um, I know there might be a question coming on the London Marathon coaches. I'll cover that one later. Um, okay. So that's all the word part. Yeah. So there's a lot of main bits that have sort of gone on in the club. I thought I'd look at the club in numbers a little bit just to show you how we developed in the last last year. Might to come out when we get to the questions. We'll go okay. So just some of the numbers for the year in the club. Uh, the first slide looks at club numbers. Um, the bottom green, uh, every single um, number of runs that we've done. So there's never been less than 100, run, 100 runs in a month in, in the club. That's in December. Um, there was 110 runs. So that's 110 runs in one month for 31 days, where Christmas Day and you know other bank holidays are in there. So that's you know showing there's um, three runs a day, four runs a day. Um, Saturdays, we only have often no runs as well. So you can see um, during the course of the year, number of runs that we have. Am I doing for time? Okay. Um, that didn't change, did it? Nope. That didn't change. It stopped. <laughs> okay. This slide, that was... Oh, you missed one, I think. Oh. Um, total number of runners in the, uh, on those runs each month. You can see again, our December's our lower month. People tend to drop off and money in December. In January, they pick up. It's also the time we start our beginners groups as well. But a lot of people come back to the club in January. And, you know, you can see a peak in there. Um, and sort of the numbers do tend to flow around the beginners groups as well. 
standing so they can see me. Um, so they do tend to flow around um, during the course of the year. New members, um, this just shows how many people join every single month through the club. Again, this you think December goes down, but it goes up a bit in December because we launch our beginners groups in the middle of December. So we see a peak, but a lot of those people enjoying in December don't start running till January. But then you can see January is our biggest month for people joining the club. You can see the other peaks are around about when our beginners courses start after Easter, so April and August for our September um, groups as well. This slide looks at the number of members that we've had in the club since we started the club in 2000, 2011, um, when we had 32 people join in the first year. And, and what you can see there is the numbers went up substantially till 2020, when we had 3,800 members of the club. We then hit COVID, and a lot of people at that point didn't renew. Um, and also, we didn't start beginners groups, so because people weren't meeting to run, so people didn't renew and join. And um, so we went down a bit. And what seems to be happening at the moment is we are still growing, but we are growing at a, a much slower rate than we were before. Probably no bad thing. We kept on that line. We were at 3,600. We could have been at like eight, ten thousand 10,000 people now. So, um, but we are, we are starting to see some growth, but it's not as fast as it was before COVID. But we are seeing that growth. Um, this one... I don't know if it tells us too much, but it's the maximum number of runners on any on a on a, on a run in every single month. Um, don't think it tells you too much that one. But I've included it anyway, but we're not hitting the hundreds on any of the runs um, during the course of the month yet. This one looks at social um, our social media. So the first chart looks at Facebook versus the club weekly email. If you look at it, Facebook interaction is still going up and the club weekly email is going up a little bit as well all the time um club weekly email went down a little bit during covid i guess people lost interest they couldn't join the runs or what was going on in the club but it's now started to pick up again if we look at instagram and twitter our twitter we don't do much on twitter um very little activity we do we post a few things on there um so that's hovering um around about the same number all the time but our instagram feed is doing quite well picking up more and more numbers um, and what we tend to do on there is put different uh, spec on photos. So different photos go on to Instagram. We don't use it as a repeat of what we put on Facebook. We try to do something different with Instagram. Um, they're just the hard numbers of where we are. The numbers in brackets show the um, what they were at the previous year, end of the last year. So our member numbers at 31st of March, this just shows you at the end of March, actual members that expired on the 31st of March were 2,675. At that, uh, the 31st of March, we had 1,947 people who had signed up to the end of next year at that stage. And at that stage, we had had 799 people hadn't renewed. Um, so you're probably wondering where we are now. So, because that's just a snapshot at the end of the year. Where we were at the 13th, a few days, a couple of days ago, we we're at 2,366 people, um, members of Webway Runners at the moment. You can see in the middle, um, so we got paid pending, uh, the money's going through the system. Um, 499 people didn't renew their membership, um, which is 18%. And you can see the percentages for the previous years. That's people who didn't renew their membership and didn't tell us they weren't renewing. Some people told us they weren't renewing, so they don't get included in those figures. 499 people didn't take any action, didn't renew, didn't tell us they weren't renewing. And that figure's 18%. It's, you know, 16%, 14% last year. It will go down a bit as the year goes on, as people will remember they haven't renewed when they try to book something, and hopefully they will then renew. So it's not significantly different. Um, as a club, we're affiliated to England Athletics and the Association of Running Clubs, as well, ARC. Um, only members who pay England the England Athletics fee as first claim are joined to England Athletics. So if you pay the £22.50 fee, you'll get affiliated to England Athletics. Um, that fee went up last year from £16 to £17. The club has to pay a fee to England Athletics to join England Athletics, and that's £150 for the year. But that's not the only fee we pay them. We have to pay them these, you know, the £17 that each member pays as well. Um, the number of people who are affiliated with England Athletics at the end of the year, 31st of March, was 306 people. Um, 
the club was allocated four London Marathon places for the 2023 event, and we drew those at the, um, we have to for, have a special event to do those, so we did that at the Ship Ashore in December, we broadcast it live on Facebook, and everyone was told about the event was happening, so they're welcome to come and join us, or they could view it live on our Facebook page. We're also members of the Association of Running Clubs, and that gives means everybody only pays their £5 membership gets covered for insurance because you, you, they're not covered by the England Athletics Insurance. They are covered by the ARC Insurance. And um, this year when the bill came in, we managed to negotiate a 10% discount on that, which saved us about £200 as a club um, on that thing. Um, Nitro does an awful lot of work behind the scenes on England Athletics, another person who does an awful lot of work and, you know, people don't know about it. How many people we got registered now, Nigel? We only need Okay. How many do we need for number of marathon places? Okay. <laughs> Bot catching on a question. <laughs> Anything? Okay. So, hopefully... Okay. Yeah. Um, okay. Um, but, you know, I think we've got a while yet. It's only about October, isn't it, when they... They um sort the cut off. So by then we'll hopefully we have plenty of people. Anything else to add on that slide, Nigel? No? Okay. I said there'll be an opportunity for questions. Do you want to see if there's any on there? Any questions? <clears throat> Go on, yeah, throw it in now. I submitted a question about um the London Marathon coaching. Um some people approached me regarding the fact that the coaching both leave London at the same time, which they felt um, oh. prevented them from getting the, the uh, return coach with the fact that the London Marathon, a lot of people didn't start their run until half past 11 this year. Um, that meant that if they did, even if they did it in sort of six hours, they were really going to be pushing it to get back to the coach. Well, um, I just want to say at this point in time, because I have had a meeting, already had a meeting with Martin, um, this isn't by any reflection, you know, I don't want this to turn into a sort of a bully party or anything like that. I want to see it raised so that it can be an open and frank conversation for people like me who are and so pace runner, I don't like the slow, um, gentle pace runner, because the club, one of the club principles on the uh, website is that it's open to all and inclusive to all, regardless of the speed, and, and, and they don't, don't want speed definitions. So, for openness, openness and transparency, uh, me, Martin and James had a meeting last night over Zoom where some proposal was put forward. It wasn't agreed on and we, not, we did, none of us were kind of, there was, there was, and it's still from the point of we were going back to Mason's and we're inquiring as to costs and things like that. But I wanted it raised so that it could be an open and transparent conversation held with everybody who an interested party, I guess. Okay, for those on Zoom, in case you didn't hear that, Lisa asked, uh, I'll summarise, Lisa, uh, Lisa raised a question about the London Marathon coach and could one of the coaches go back um, later at the moment, both of the coaches go back at six o'clock. Um, and um, I suppose when the original question came up on Facebook, um, there was a lot of feeling was expressed about it. Um, from my point of view, we've done the club, we've done the coaches for nine years. Um, we've never had any feedback previous. I'm not. I'm just going to give the background, so don't jump on me straight away. Um, we've uh, done the coaches for nine years. Yeah, let me finish first. We've done the coaches for nine years. And we've never had any feedback that um, the coaches should go later. The only feedback we have had is could the coaches go back earlier? And we've always batted that one back to say that we want to get as many people to um, be able to, you know, take advantage of the coaches. Um, and so it has that, you know, that has gone away. Um, when Lisa said she wanted to raise it at the AGM, um, I 
I thought, right, let's see what we can do. So organised a meeting last night with James, who looks after the London Marathon coaches for the club, and with Lisa, and thought of ways that we may be able to sort of do something for, you know, to meet the needs of everybody. So we came up with... Um, Looking at the numbers of people who have used the London, you know, do the London Marathon from Midway Runners last year, we had something like 60 people on the results with um, London, with London Marathon who took part. Six of the six of those took over six hours. Um, so from my our point of view is I'm not sure it's going to be a vast number of people who want to use that later coach. But there, yeah, some people will want to. So what we are thinking is perhaps we should reduce the second coach to 34 people and that comes back a bit later 7 30 we was our sort of a thought for that one um so that's what we're investigating at the moment with masons the only issue the um other thing to this is we've always do the coach to break even so last year we lost a um, significant amount of money because the coach wasn't full so but this year it was full um, when we'd factored in the fact that we wouldn't sell all the tickets this year so it was a slight it was a slight profit not much but um, it was a slight profit this year um but what we'll be doing again is trying to make sure the coach breaks even so what the we will do is we'll base the seats on the fight you know on the price of the coach so we'll probably end up with the coach having a different pricing structure um we know the price of the six o'clock coach um it'll be 21 pound because you know that's how it breaks even we're trying to find out how much it will cost to have a 34-seater because we hope we can sell all 34 seats. We probably won't sell 55 seats for people who want to come back at 7.30, 8 o'clock. So we're trying to find out the price of that. Um, if that works, then, you know, and the other thing we will need is because people will book a coach, they'll either book the 6 o'clock coach or the later coach. Um, they will only be able to travel back on that coach. We can't have a free-for-all for a um, massive queue for people trying to get the six o'clock coach because they don't want to wait till 7.30 and then people who are finished at one o'clock, you know, can't get on that coach. So you'll book for one coach and we'll have to be very strict about who can get on those co that coach because that will, I think, will be the only fair way we can do it. So what we will need, we'll have is a coach manager for each coach. Um, James will do the uh, six o'clock coach and we will need a coach manager for the 7.30. Unless we have that coach manager, we won't be able to implement it either. We will need that coach manager within about the next week because we'll need to make a decision on what we're doing. So there's two things. We need those prices, and we need that um, coach manager as well. Um, and then we will also work out the pricing, and we can do more on it. So we are trying to look at it. Um, you know, we did have a you know something in place. We are trying to look at it now. Um, sorry, I, you know, I don't know if I, it was the wrong thing to do to bat it back originally, but you know, yeah. Sorry, you want to ask questions? Yeah, uh, me uh, said we might get more people for the coach. Very true. This will be a pilot year for us to see how it works. And one of the things I've said to the, you know, who what I would want from the coach manager is we collect the number of people who get on those coaches. So we understand how many people are getting on those coaches. So everyone will be issued with a ticket when they get on the coach, which I'll have to show to get back on the right coach later on. And we'll be able to collect those tickets in. We'll be able to count them and see how many people, you know, went for those coaches. You know, maybe the following year we can go to three coaches and have an earlier coach, four o'clock, six o'clock and an eight o'clock coach. I don't know, you know, but we've only got certain amount, you know, there's only a certain number of people who want to use it. There was another question there as well. Yeah, no, no, I accept that. And the sample I used was just, it was just the people who did, because I've got that data, so I could look at that data. Um, There's the people that, 
Yep, yep. I will admit we don't know uh, until we do it. We don't know. A lot of people who finish earlier as well just get the. A lot of people just get the coach down and don't want to wait for the coach till six o'clock and they make their own way home as well. What we can do is we can put on the coaches. People can use it as they want. If they, you know, if they want to use it one way, that's fine. And they want to get the train back and want to travel back with their family, their supporters, that's fine. Um, but, you know, we'll put that infrastructure in. Hopefully we can make this change. But as I say, once, we, once we've got the prices and once we've got, we have a coach manager, you know, hopefully we can decide to do it. This... Okay. Yes. Yeah. The person who uh, I would point out the person who is the coach manager will need to be at the pub half an hour before because the coach right so needs to be fit and able. You know, um, be, at the, be at the no, but you know, so they can tell everybody in the pub where it is, lead people to it, and then take it if you're collapsed and can't. You know, but that's the same for the six o'clock or the eight o'clock coach. Sorry, you want to ask a question about when do we have? Yeah, it doesn't get back in 20 months to get to 20 and get back. Yeah, you know, at the same time, is if that coach was the coach looking for money. Yeah, no, no, yeah, no, I'm just explaining. We will place it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 No, no, no. Um, I'm not sure I've got an answer for that, but you know, isn't it? It's a point more than anything else, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, I'll come to Steve. Yeah, no, fine. Steve. I think, I think it's really important that the lady who raised this issue, um, I've always had the feeling that six o'clock is way too early for some runners mm -hmm. and some supporters because, you know, if you're supporting down there, and I've done it, you know, by the end of the day, you're exhausted, you've got something to eat. Yeah. You don't have too much for a coach. Having said that, I think it's important that they might recognise that. I mean, yeah, Martin yeah. has. Yeah. And I think that, you know, if we can lay on and treat the coaches mm -hmm. at the time, and I think you are right, I think there will be more people there maybe um, yeah. think would want to come and they yeah. But I think it's important that Martin's recognised that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, we are yeah. the gentle kind of Yeah. 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 Um, but yeah, we we'll, I mean, hopefully we'll work. If we can work the prices coming, we'll work. You know, we will. You know, we'll let you know once we've got those questions answered. We also have to bear in mind the people who you know take three hours to run the math, and there are you know equal number of those. So we need to be fair to everybody. You know, they finished at one o'clock. Waiting till six o'clock at night is a long while to wait when you're cold, wet, you know, and all those things. So we'll try and get it right. We don't always get it right, I, you know, but we will try. I will need to move on a little bit. Yeah, so we're going to do the one, two, five. That's a level, but you'll probably find that smaller cups are not that much cheaper than bigger cups. Possibly. Yeah. The other issue we've got is if we put a six o'clock, um, an eight six seven thirty coach on as well. We're not sure how much that's going to cost. Yeah. 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 The driver, it's time for the driver, how long they're allowed to drive. It may be an issue, I don't know. That's why we're talking to Masons. We need that for Masons. I can't guess. Don't think any of us can guess. Go on. Both boats would go out at the same time. Because we otherwise we'd, it would get too complicated to try and try and people to book a court. You know, they're gonna have to get gonna be one two coaches would go at the same time. You can't, I mean. It will get too much of a nightmare to try and, you know, which coach you're booking for. Yes. Yeah. Angela, sorry, I'm going to close this one soon because it's going to go on. Yes.
it's, it's just how it, it kind of made it real the way it replicated it. It's not fast runners against the slow runners. No, no, no. I feel um, there's a lot of faster runners because I trained with a lot of fast runners and we really liked to manage the course and they were so supportive. A lot of them didn't mind that we did a little bit later to yeah. play there and support the rest of the runners. So, um, like, it's, yeah. In no way is it fast runners, slow runners, no. people who don't like it. Yeah. No. The whole yeah. yeah. As I say, we've always had the complaint from the far some of the faster runners is they would like the coach to leave earlier. Um so you know it's trying to get it by, it's never easy. Um we'll try our best, but we'll come back to you on that point. Sorry, people on Zoom, you probably haven't heard a lot of that conversation, but we're talking about the coach. We're investigating um, a later coach coming back. Um, what we're waiting for is a coach manager, which Open Lease is going to do, we're waiting for some costs for Masons. Once we've got that, we can see if it's feasible to do it. Um, but I'll keep Lisa, myself and James will continue talking. Uh, any other questions? I've got a question. I want to make a comment. It's about the first aid. A lot of increases have been, you wouldn't know about, obviously. I think it's huge credit to the club, and Michelle in particular, for going about it. Fact that we're going to train people in CPR. I think that is all the world onto us. So, yeah. You know, it's a huge thing, and the more people can train, the better. So I think it's huge credit to Michelle in particular, but the club as well. I didn't want to say to the run leads, but obviously over the events of the last few weeks, have sort of been cut. I didn't want to use it as a selling activity for people should go on the first aid. We really encourage people to go on the first aid. And I know one of the ladies at that at the scene was on the first aid course as well. So pulled some of the, you know, she found it much more useful having done the first aid course. Um, I'll give you another chance to ask questions later. So um, hopefully I've dealt with the We've covered the, the um, key one. I'm going to move on to um, the charity of the year. Last year's charity of the year was Will and Hospice, a uh, cover year for 2022, 2023. And during the year, we raised money for Will and Hospice. So get excited. And I'm pleased to say the amount of money that Red Bay Runners raised for Will and Hospice was, drum roll, excitement. You pretend to be excited. <laughs> £6,938. Which... I think it's absolutely fantastic. Um, so you you might ask, uh, where where did that money come from? Um, I can't read on that screen that well. Uh, a lot, not a lot of it came from our club events. Um, so the big event, um, we raised over a thousand pound a beat the barge. We raised over a thousand pound at one thousand four hundred at MK twenty four. Thousand pound at Santa because I organised that one. You know, it's a morning event. Um, and a thousand pound, or one thousand five hundred by the Christmas raffle that we do. So, whoever, when you nominate it, if you've nominated for the, the club charity of the year, we'll expect you to organize the, um, the Christmas raffle in, the, um, in December for us. The couple obviously help, um, is that you know, we'll sell tickets and things. Um, but that's a breakdown of all of the um, where all the money was raised. You can see that that in the um, before, as I mentioned a moment ago. And one final point is, um, I just look back, and since we introduced the club of the year, which is fairly early in the um, early early days of the club, we've supported twelve charities now. And every year, you've at the AGM, you've elected the charity you want as charity of the year. And during that time, we've raised over seventy thousand pounds, which I think is pretty good for a running club, which isn't our prime focus to try and raise money for other things. So I just want to say well done to everyone, and again, so many people help in doing this. Um, for us, um, and very nicely, Dawn has come along from Will and Hospice to um, tell us how these funds might be used. Go in there. If you stand about where I'm, they'll see you on Zoom. Okay, so yeah, I'm Dawn Clark. I'm the challenges um, manager at Will and Hospice. I look after people that do mad things, which include running, so cycling, running, trekking, and all sorts. And when Martin called last year to say that we had been nominated as your charity, and we have been really lucky to have been it previously as well, we were over the moon, absolutely honoured to be your charity. And you know what? The words you've been using tonight is supportive. I've never met a group of people who are so supportive of each other, and there's so many of you. Um, I look after events where I will be there volunteering or running and we say Redway Runners and we cheer everybody, of course. 
but you see your green coming towards us and it is amazing and the biggest smiles and we saw you in London and Twin Lakes London landmarks everywhere so I just think you should be really proud of how you do help each other and also how your brand is so strong you know Willen is very proud of what we do because what we do is amazing um, and you only ever find that out if we perhaps look after somebody that you know or one of your family members so be proud to be members of this amazing running club um, we've raised £6,900. That is fantastic. It'll make a huge difference to what we do. But I've got people in this room that have done London Marathon and they've done it for Women Hospice. You've raised thousands of pounds this year as a club. Um, London Marathon, if you're thinking of doing that mad thing, then apply for one of our charity places. We had 27 runners in the marathon in April and they've raised nearly £60,000. We've only got much less places time but eight places because a lot of it was deferred from 2020 i don't know if that happened with the club so we had 27 of which 10 people chose us as their charity because they had a ballot place you've got to run a marathon you don't have to do it for charity but people chose us so you make a huge difference we need to raise 11 pounds 33 pence every minute that's four and a half thousand pound and we're looking after 300 pound sorry 300 people today at home We've got up to 15 people in our inpatient unit. It's an amazing service that you only ever need when it's not the greatest time for you and your family. We are opening our cafe to the public. It was the end of May, but it's now the end of June. So as you're running <laughs> past Will and Lake, come into our cafe, homemade cakes and biscuits, and that's helping us generate some of this money that we need. So I just think you're all <laughs> such positive people. Stay and be positive. You help people go through all sorts of running journeys. And just thank you from Willen, because we need people in clubs like you to help still be here for the next family or the next member or person that we know that need help. So on behalf of Willen, that's fantastic, but there's much more than that from this club that's come to us this year. Um, so I don't think we should have a picture with Martin for our social media and yours, but Ed, any questions? Oh, the cafe open yeah, <laughs> yeah. Time you run, probably about tenish on a Saturday or Sunday. Morning runs. Is that all right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, please. Yeah. Again, thank you to everybody. It's I found you fun. How many people have done so much work? Thank you. Thank you. No, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you to everybody. Okay, move on. Um, Treasurer's report. Um, oh, I'm not doing too bad. Um, as I say, Morris um, audits their club accounts. If you know Morris, he's audited the club accounts every year. I can say he is very thorough with the accounts and, you know, uh, when he goes through them. Um, these are the key points that Morris uh, picked out. Um, he gave me some notes. Normally, he'd stand up and say a few words, but he decided to go running at uh, Silverstone instead. Um, the club accounts show that we were very active on we were very active on many fronts. So, um, subscription fees of over two of two thousand over two thousand pound are up on the previous years, reflecting growth in the club of over two thousand people. Um, charity events for costs generated over twenty thousand pound. After expenses to contributions, we were able to make to the club charities an impressive £6,938. The club saw expenditure of £2,000 in training for club members covering first aid, run leadership, coaching, investment in club equipment was over £5,000. Primarily, a lot of that equipment was paid into first aid, which I told you about earlier. Um, so these are the notes Morris has made. The net result um, of the year was the club lost um, just under £2,000 last year. Um, but the previous year had been a surplus of £2,000. The main reason for the change was the investment in training and equipment in the club. So for me, that's where we should be putting the money, investing in the club in, you know, things like training and equipment. You know, that's where I'd like to see it going, not on individual people, you know, like one person to run the London Marathon or something. You know, I like to see that money goes back to everybody. That's a personal feeling. Um, which one am I on? Um, the cash situation remains strong at the end of the year. At the end of the year, we're £56,000 in the club. But you need to bear in mind, on the 31st of March, everybody has just paid their membership. 
Um, and when you pay your membership on 31st of March, that then has to fund the club for the whole of the year um, going forward. And I'll give you some figures in a moment. Let's find the right sheet. Um, both of those are coming in. Uh, all in all, it's been a successful year for the club. Uh, at least in the medium term, our financial position is secure. I am so pleased that we don't have to go fundraising in backpacking in Sainsbury's on a Sunday morning. Um, that's the last thing I want for the club. So I'd rather we were healthy personally than you know having to go continually um, backpacking. And I just said, you know, the the club council are you know, very uh, well well maintained and made his job reasonably successful. I put that bullet point in. Didn't give him a chip. <laughs> Sorry, only joking. No, that's all. Well, I just copied word for word what Morris said. I mean, I hear a number of people mention, you know, that the club's got a very healthy bank balance. So I thought I'd give you a perspective on some of those figures as well. Um, we say £56,000 in the club accounts. So I just had a look at some of the expenditure we've had since then. Um, obviously, the £6,938 has to be paid to, has been paid to Will and Hospice. Um, we've agreed another £1,000 on first aid to buy some more training um dolly things we shall explain the dolly so i call them dollies um we had to pay for a london marathon coach 1100 which is that happened in april the coach we had to pay the final balance of that fee um england athletics fees we've had to pay 6355 pound um we've agreed in the club to buy some more timing equipment we um and that's going to be about £4,000. And in addition to that, there's a yearly licence we have to pay. That yearly licence is about £1,000 as well for the software. Um, we've agreed to pay around about £850 in welfare in the club for some welfare issues. Um, so all those things alone um, come to nearly £20,000. And that's just in the last month, uh, since the 31st of March. But on top of that, we've agreed to increase our storage facility because as we get more and more, the club gets bigger and bigger, we'll get more and more stuff. We bought a load of first aid equipment, so that's gone into our storage as well. So Steve's just, Steve looks after our equipment. We're moving to a bigger storage facility. That comes to nearly £3,000 a year we're paying for storage. So, you know, there's a lot of money to be sent there. £1,000 for our mailing system, so you get the club weekly email and we keep in contact with everybody. MK24, we've got a lot of people who pay for entries. We've got fees to pay, um, about £1,800 £1, for T-shirts alone. Plus, there's all the other bits that have to be paid for MK24. Um, you do the track every week. The club pays for people in the club. The club pays for people in the club to do um, track. Um, the track fees will come to about £1,800 a year as well. So it's free. You want to go to it? You know, the club is paying for that. Please do use the track. The good news is since COVID, it's one of the things that has actually come back stronger. We're getting many more people at track than we were pre-COVID. So it's really good to see that we're using that facility as a club. Um, so, you know, there's a lot of expenditure and we can invest in things like that. So, you know, we can do things like the coach. If the coach doesn't work for London Marathon and people don't buy it and we only sell six places, the club has got a financial base that we can, could lose money. I try not to lose money because I hate losing money in the club, you know, but, you know, we've got that financial base. So there were the auditor's notes, and I've just added a bit on the end of that as well. This is the income and expenditure thing. So what Morris produces is his final outcome of it all. I don't propose to go through that. It is in the report. Um, we can have a look at it. Um, if anyone's got any questions on the finances, please do ask. You know, uh, open book. I'll send you the spreadsheet. There's a lot of lines. Um, and that is the sign-off from the auditor that um, he's happy with the club accounts. Um, questions? Yeah, somebody. Simon. Um, obviously, we, that we still, we still, obviously, with all those expenses we have about to go, that still lives with a very healthy bank balance. Yep. Which is fantastic down to the top of the committee. You know, know he is. But I suppose the question is, how much of the contingency do we actually need to have? Because, um, as you say, we don't really have many costs in, in the year. And we kind of get that covered by the the five pounds that everybody pays. Mm -hmm. So I suppose it's about we don't want to be carrying sort of excess money for no reason when he could be doing something good within the club. Yeah. I mean we've always taken a view when people have come to the committee with from my point of view I want to invest, we'll spend money where it's going back to everybody, not just to one person or so we've got, you know, the cross country to pay for, then everybody can take part in the cross country. We've got a few hundred pounds to pay to um, take part in the, several hundred pounds to take part in the cross country. 
Um, so if people have ideas how we think we should spend money, I would say it needs to benefit everybody, not just one small pool, not just the elite, or not just the slower, easier runners. Um, it should be for everybody that money will be spent. So things like track, proposal came to the track and that we should pay for the track as a club. We agreed it because everyone can go to the track sessions when we do them. So if somebody has an idea how we can spend it. Yes, we will. Um, but just bear in mind, we do, yeah, we do have to keep some money because, as I say, we had the welfare issue that we had to deal with and spend money on. So we can spend do that in the future as well. And the money we got in the bank at the moment, after you know those things come out, has do has does have to last us the whole of the year till next year. We do get some income coming in as people join. We make a small amount of money on the standard kit, very very small amounts, but um, and one or two other things we make money on. Um, but when we do our events, any profit that comes from those events goes back to the goes to the charity on all of our events. Um, the club has agreed to pay for the software for the um, go with the results. Sorry, the timing system that we've got. So, you know, right. it's finding somewhere to spend it, um, but spend it that is set to everybody. And um, yeah, I probably haven't answered your question fully, but, you know, no, that's no, where no. I come from. If anyone's got an idea how we should spend it, I send it in. We're in a very healthy financial situation. Yeah. Fantastic. For yeah. Me any organisation to be in, um, but I suppose the fact is if people do have ideas which yes. could be a benefit to the whole of the club, that yep. you would be able to welcome to those. Yes, and those ideas have come into the committee and yeah. most times they're agreed and spent. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I've got to say, Michelle and Simon have spent an awful lot of money in the club for, <laughs> for events and the first aid in the last year. <laughs> they seem to have no problem. <laughs> Is me being through all the whole time. <laughs> uh, was there any other questions? Okay, we come to the bit in the uh, in the evening evening where we elected the committee, your committee for the year. Um, we've asked anybody if they wanted to be nominated. Um, anyone wanted to nominate it, and I'm not aware that anybody has uh, has stood. So um, don't know how to do this. I've stood as chairman. Um, does anybody else want to stand, or does anyone disagree with that? No. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, so I don't know if we need to check whether anyone's saying anything on Zoom, do we? Or Okay, um, for secretary is Denise Browning. Um, I don't know if anybody else is uh, wanting, if you want to stand or anything, put something in the chat if you're on Zoom. Um, I'm not aware of anybody else has um, stood again, uh, said, so... Denise has said she will stand again. So, Denise, you're in. Treasurer is Karen Lawrence. Um, Karen is happy to stand again. Okay. Um, social and race support is James um, Dwight, who's gone to race up at Silverstone this evening, so isn't with us. Um, so, I think elected. Membership secretary is Nigel for England Athletics. Okay, Nigel. And um, run lead coordinator is Michelle. Oh. The only issue is it's, it's part of the titles that come from England Athletics, I think Michelle was about to say. Um, but the other issue is it's in our constitution, so we'd have to change the constitution. We'd either have to have an EGM to change the constitution. It's something we could, if we can change, we can consider the next week, next year, or have an extraordinary meeting to change it. But no, it's, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Michelle doesn't do as much on the coordinating of runs, but make sure everything happens behind the scenes, you know, like, all our run leads, we have to have um, documented on things like uh, special group and to be a run lead, they have to be signed off by the committee. That whole process happens that we've got. <laughs> yeah, maybe that's a better title, but yeah, we can take that one forward. We take that forward. I don't know if we can change it from England athletic point of view, but we'll have to have that conversation. 
Um, so do we do we did run Lloyd coordinator? I assume the was going to shout if they think you know they want to stand for the, any of these roles. Public relations officer um, David Rose has decided to step down as uh, public relations officer. Very sadly, to doing our PR for the club. Um, Michelle Barla has offered to stand. She couldn't make it this evening because of childcare commitments. Um, but unless there's any objection, I think she's voted in. Yep. Um, events manager Steve organises all our races. Um, I think. <laughs> Hard luck, Steve. <laughs> Doug Yabsley is the under 18s coordinator. I haven't even mentioned the under 18s. That's what I thought after I sent the presentation. I haven't even mentioned it. the under 18s you know, are going from strength to strength at the moment. Um, there's a whole piece in the Word document about our under 18s and what's going on. They, another area of the club that goes on very quietly behind the scenes and it's progressing well. We've got, we've got a few extra um, run, more run leads in there now helping Doug. So, uh, Doug can't go the dick meeting on zoom um but doug you're elected again and then online activity is karen who's on karen painting who is on zoom um and if anyone agrees she's elected as well fantastic okay was that fair i mean but if anyone wanted to stand you had the chance so but or say now right <laughs> martin can you hear me oh someone is speaking um yeah it's it's me it's denise can you get someone i want someone to propose all the people and second it for the minutes please okay for the minutes would anyone like to propose um the committee uh lisa cameron has proposed the committee would someone like to second it um lisa here has second it is that okay uh, denise is that okay who, who second who seconded it uh lee steer Brilliant, thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, this year we've got um, six nominated charities for the... I'm going to move on to Charity of the Year for this year, to the 31st of March 2024. We've had six charities um, send in nominations for charities, and we're going to let them... Um, two minutes, uh, to talk for two minutes. Michelle's going to um, give a wave um, when, it, when the two minutes are up, so it'll be a little bit ruthless because time is moving on a little bit more than I would have liked. <laughs> Um, so we've had six charities. Um, I'll ask each charity if they want to come up and say some words. You don't have to, but if you want to, um, please come forward. The first one is Samuel's Charity. I'll put something on the screen from Samuel's Charity. We've got Samuel's Charity here, haven't we? Did you want to say something? No, no, feel free. Come up. Um, this was the... Uh, what I put up is what was sent in as the nomination. So if you stand about here, that'd be fantastic. Then see you on Zoom. You're being timed. I don't know if I can... If I can read it, hold on. <laughs> Time's up. <laughs> Thank you very much, yes. I've, I've written it so my voice doesn't break, I'm sorry. Um, yeah, I'd like to take just two minutes of your time uh, to talk about an opportunity to make a real difference to the lives of young people who are terminally ill or in long-term care in hospital. And we can do this by selecting Samuel's charity as our charity of the year. Samuel's Charity is a local charity, and in fact, Martin Lee there, um, who is the CEO and founder of charities uh, with me this evening and is also a member of the Redway Run Runners. Martin was the father of Samuel, who tragically lost his life to a rare form of cancer in January 2014. He, he was nine years old. In the months before his sad passing, Samuel and his family spent a lot of time in hospital where Samuel was an inspiration whose courage touched everyone around him. In fact, Samuel's charity was his idea, um, as well as now being his legacy. Samuel's charity helps these kids through providing things that the underfunded NHS just isn't able to do. Basically, things to make their lives and those of their families more bearable, including medical equipment, entertainment and centre equipment. By choosing Samuel's charity as our charity of the year, um, we have the power to make an impact on the lives of these children and on the future of what is still quite a small local ch local Milton Keynes based charity uh, and working in Milton Keynes and elsewhere. I I'm the father of two boys uh, and, <clears throat> and the grandfather of an another boy. Uh, and what happened to Martin is everyone's worst, worst nightmare. And, and the fact that something good can come out of it is fantastic and that's why i know that getting support from the members of a fantastic club like redway runners could actually make a tangible difference um, thanks for your time and with your help and um, your vote we could make a difference together
Second charity nomination was for the Guide Dogs. Um, came from Julia and Peter Rob, Rob, um, Robwell. Do you want to say something? Oh, <laughs> oh, oh. Uh. <laughs> Good evening, my name's Julia and I'm a Redway runner along with my husband. Um, I'm a volunteer and I'm the branch organisation of Milton Keynes Guide Dogs, you know Guide Dogs as a whole. Um, our aim is to try and raise money to help visually and blind people to be able to lead an independent life. As you may know, we have got some visually impaired runners in the club and we have guide runners who go with them. My husband is currently training to be one as well. Little pups like Ollie here cost approximately £50,000 to fully train, support and become a guide dog. That includes all the food that they eat, all the vet bills and the support that the guide dog owners need throughout their working life. So I'm very passionate about this charity. I've been doing it for 16 years. I've puppy walked 14 puppies and bred two litters of guide dogs. So I'd like you to consider guide dogs this year as the charity of the year. Thank you. And third one is for Thames Valley Air Ambulance. I don't know if Tanya or Joe Wood or anybody wants to speak on behalf of the Air Ambulance. Hi, hi, oh, Martin. Sorry? Can you hear me? Um, can we put them on speaker or not? Um, okay, Tanya, try and speak it now. Hello. Yeah, I think we can just about hear you. Go. Yeah. Um, so as you may already know, a few weeks ago, a group of us experienced the phenomenal work of the Thames Valley Air Ambulance. Um, after after being in that situation, we, we've done some research, um, all of us, to find that they are an independent charity. They are not funded through government schemes or the national lottery, and they rely solely on the generous donations of their supporters. Um, we're nominating them to show how grateful we are just for their amazing care and compassion for that day. Um, and I just really want to thank you all for listening. Thanks, Daniel. Thank you. Um, next up, we have Scotty's Little Soldiers. Um, do you want to? Yep, <laughs> Angela. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> but I've got loads of children outside ready to come in like the dog. <laughs> right. um, okay, Scotty's Little Soldiers. Um, some of you are aware, um, I served in the armed forces with my husband. My husband was killed in Afghanistan and my children were 12 weeks and just under two at the time, 12 weeks old and just under two. Um, and at the time there was no support for these children or the children that have lost a parent in the armed forces there's nothing for them there's no bereavement support um anything you know there, there's something for us as mums us widows um one of the widows herself realized this and she set up the charity herself um scotty's little soldiers when she saw the devastation in her children the charity originally it was just set up to try and give them a break, give them a little holiday. So they raised enough money to buy um, a caravan at a Haven site for a holiday for these children. Um, and then as the charity, as the numbers that they support grew to over 400 children now that are bereaved from the British Armed Forces, um, the charity started to grow and they have now four holiday homes. Um, which is great, but that's not the biggest part of the support that they give. They give the bereavement support. They give um, they give funding. They they give them grants to help with school activities, things that 
you know, if there was two parents there, there would be more money to, to support these things. Um, they give them treats, they give them a Christmas party, they give them um, activities where all these children can actually get together and be amongst other children in the same situation. They can talk about their dad or their mum. They can talk about the situation and not feel bad because they're upsetting someone or, you know, they might, these children probably can't even talk to their mums, their parents, because they don't want to upset their parents. But they're amongst all these other children, they can. Um, so yeah, that's my nomination. So obviously they've helped my children, but it's national and they help the children of all British armed forces. Next uh, nomination was for Age UK. Is anyone here to talk for Age UK? Okay, I'll give you a few seconds just to read the, what was um, sent in to us. Um, <laughs> <laughs> okay uh move on and next was different strokes um is anyone here from different strokes to talk this one's quite uh detailed don't know if anyone wants to if you want to come forward and read it at all feel free Okay, so one ahead. Sorry, give you a second or two longer. Enough time. Okay, so what we're going to do now is um, some bits of paper are coming around. So I'm going to do one of the Zoom ones. Um, Hello, everybody on Zoom. Um, I'm going to um, just come out here and I'm going to start up the poll so that you can. Find the poll for today. I can't find the poll now. I have to recreate it again. Okay. Be patient with me while I put it together. Oh, yeah. The list. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just give me a minute. Be patient with me and I'll get the sorted so you can all vote. Wander around without civilians, so don't need to your pen inspection. Can we put the list back up? Uh, I've just got to do the online. We're doing your nine votes. We can bring it up, but um, I can. I've got them. I've got them on my phone here. You can read them out if you want. Uh, slips. What was the last one called? Different strokes. Uh, they were, those interested in what they were, they're Samuel's Charity, Guide Dogs, Thames Valley Air Ambulance, Scottish Little Soldiers, Age UK, and Different Strokes. Samuel's Charity. Okay, everybody, Guide you'll Dogs, see up on the screen Ambulance, now the uh, Charity of the Year vote. You can now go ahead and votes. cast your votes. You get that, so. Oh, uh, there's a pen there, Bob. <laughs> 
Then we're not hoping anyone feel. Are you okay? You wait. Let me yeah, just close wait. it off. I'm waiting for one more yeah. person to vote. One person. Do you want to give them 10 seconds or something? Yeah. They don't vote. They don't vote. Got one person who hasn't voted yet. Um, if you think you voted but he didn't go through, maybe press it again, please. Just so we get everybody gets their chance to vote. And after close this in 10 seconds. Okay, final chance. We're going to close the vote now. Put you on Zoom, Michelle. Okay. While they're counting the vote, Michelle's going to just tell you a little bit about how she spent all the club money. Um, I just talk to this crowd. I'm just talking back. Uh, yeah, I'm going to come up with this now. Just give me a second. Just want to close that. So six for them and one for that. Can you tell them what it is? Yeah, I'm going to sort of get a sort out of them. Yeah. Uh, okay, so last year at the AGM, somebody said, why don't we get a defib? And we were like, defib? We haven't got enough money for a defib. Anyway, of course we had enough money for a defib. So we bought ourselves a lovely defib. £1,500 roughly, give or take, okay, we've got the deep in for the club. This comes to all of our club events, and um, and it's stored with me. So any major event, this comes with us. It's not a park run, because park run's got their own. Any club runs, obviously, the deep in isn't there, but when we have an event, we'll take it with us. Anyway, that was the beginning, this tiny little £1,500 that Martin put with that. Then we just, oh, yeah. what we thought... We don't just want a defib, we want people to know what to do with a defib. So Martin was like, who could train everybody? Ta -da! So off I go on a week's training course to go and become a first aid trainer. So that again, no idea. Two grand, something like that, that, it, that the club then paid for me to become a first aid trainer. Then I become a first aid trainer, but we've got no equipment, we've just got a defib. That's all we've got. So I was like, Martin, we need to get the equipment. We need some of these, right? They're roughly 250 pounds each. So Martin, you can have one. One. So we got three. <laughs> so um, we did that. Then I was like, well, we really need a baby as well. <laughs> all right, you can have one. I did get one. And then we needed a junior as well, which we got. So then that's good, but we also needed to know we've got the real deep if you can't practice on a real one. We needed a pretend one. So we got we this was about another 400 pounds. And then I was like, well, I can't just have one. If we've got like three of these, we probably need three of these. And then so we got another few of these. Then we had to hire the hall as well. So we have to hire the hall. We've got that four times a year at the moment. But then we realized we've done a couple of the training courses. We still need another three of these. Martin, can we have another three? Yes, we've got six. So anyway, we we can teach 12 people, at, or I can teach 12 people at a time to do their first aid training. Four hour course, and it's aimed solely at run leads. Down my breath, man. Am I talking for too long? No, no. Nah. So, um, so we've done it to England athletic standards. So when you're a run lead, you have to do first aid. So this, this is compliant with England athletics. It's everything that they want and a little bit more. We try to make it really good for them, informal, and so that you basically, you feel confident at any event that would happen during a, during a running incident. Um, it, at the moment, as I say, it's only open to run leads, it's open to people that are involved in running events, and it's open to just key people in the club. If you think you're key in the club and you need to learn first aid, get in touch with me or Martin, and we can assess whether or not there's spaces in the course and whether you can be prioritised in the course as well. And as I say, we're only running four courses this year. We might do more next year. Depends how it goes. Depends on the uptake. But so far, we've had excellent feedback. Lisa, you've been, haven't you? No, no you haven't. No, I think you've been. David's been. David's been. Are they an Anne's been? <laughs> so, so we've had we've had good feedback. And if you want to say anything, if it's helped you at all. We really, I just focus on this is what you need to do and try to give you the confidence to do it. If anything should happen, just so you've got the confidence to get on, to have that ability, the knowledge on doing your very best for somebody when there's any type of incident when you're out with your <laughs> running friends. Um, and I think 
that's fine. But any questions yeah. about the equipment or anything that we've done? Yes. Michelle, will you be taking the, the dollies to the events just to sort of demonstrate? So, um, Steve has given me the uh, the dates of all the big events this year. Um, so there's the Thurston Relay, there's yeah. the Old Money Run, the MCO24. <laughs> Into today. <laughs> so at every big event, I'm going to have the dollies up there and the training defib up there. So if anybody wants to have a practice and wants to understand how to do chest compressions, how to put the pads onto somebody, or just wants to run through anything with me, I will be up there at all of the big events this year. Thank you, Steve. Any other questions? It's a fantastic facility for the club to have, or the facility or thing for the club to have. You know, we just need to make sure we, you know, take advantage of it. You know, particularly we'll focus on the run leads, but the event staff as well. But, you know, I'd like to get it rolled out to sort of regular tail runners or people like that. Obviously, I need to talk to Michelle about how we do that. But, you know, I'd like to get as many people using it as possible. We've invested a lot of money in this. We want to just move it forward. Simon? We do have, there are, I think, running cars. Not so good, but they are running. Good. Are that? Yeah. <laughs> just wondered, you know, would it be possible somebody could offer out as an income generator? So we didn't do it to make money. So no, I, but I'm doing this. Yeah. So I, I am just a volunteer. Does the same for everybody else, and um, and we can only take twelve. And generally, we're filling or near filling each of the courses. And I kind of don't want to take it away from Redway Runners. So if I only had ten and I could take twelve and I had capacity for two more, I'd rather two Redway Runners came. And rather than selling it, that's that will be my preference. I think we've got to be a little bit careful on selling it as well, making it an income stream for the club. Um, no, they're, they're, they're thinking about carefully, just feels uh, not sure, <laughs> but we you know we have, you know if we we have talked that maybe you know for part one key people we could offer it to some of the part one random directors, something like that. But we're not at a stage yet. We, you know, we haven't started it. We are going to fill it with run leads people first. But we may get to a stage where, you know, we could offer it as a free, you know, so the club is paying for that sort of thing for things that a lot of our runners are at part. It's just something I pulled off the top of my head. But, you know, that's me. I'll see. You get the same margin as a part I mean, if you were to collapse next to a marshal, they're, they're the person who's going to help you more than anyone. So Absolutely. maybe um, it's a marshal to a runway runners. We do it on a regular basis. Yeah, yeah. Key, key, key event, where they run our people, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. no. I just but... to get the word out that, um, yeah. that it is to major, major players yeah. in Redway Runs. And we did take the equipment to the Milton Keynes Math, and we had a tent at the Milton Keynes Math, and we took the um, took it there as well, so people would come along and have a look at it. So... The, uh, yeah, oh, <laughs> at one point. <laughs> you were there. Yeah, advertising. Okay, um, I'm running a little bit over. Thank you, Michelle. If you've got any questions for Michelle later, do ask her. I'm sure she won't run off quite straight at the end. We'll be around for a few minutes if you want to ask her anything. Okay, um, next slide should say result of the vote. Um, they very kindly counted up the votes uh, and the winning... Winnie, winning, that's the right word. The one that got the most votes was the Thames Valley Air Ambulance. So Thames Valley Air Ambulance... So, Thames Valley Air Ambulance will be the Redway Runners Charity of the Year for 2023 to 20, till 31st of March next year. Um, the people who nominated that year will be in touch with you about doing the Christmas raffle as well. Um, thank you to all those people who presented. I'm really sorry, you know, only one. I mean, you know, we, yeah, but, but yeah, seems the fairest way to do it. People come to the AGM, get the vote um, in the say of it. I think end of presentation um i want to say thank you for attending if there's any other final questions i'll give you a moment for it as i did mention the slides the full report are on the on that page on the website that link went live at 7 30 this evening so it should be on our web, website now um as i say again event like this there's lots of people who help behind the scenes you know michelle simon um morris people who aren't here you know helps ladies at the back are just opening some wine and some um some crisp and orange juice um so do have something like that before you go um any questions you haven't asked them now you can email them in to me if anyone's got any final questions i'm quite happy to try and take them and defer them to somebody else yes
Yeah, um, we struggled a bit. I mean, we felt that the David Lloyd format had almost run its, run its course. So we always struggled with David Lloyd as a venue. Um, but a number of people said to, and the comment was made to me, we would like to go back to a meal and a party. Hence, we did the Bistro Live thing, because that was a food and a thing. And it was a very good, very good value that evening. But obviously, that, you don't get that value in December. So... Yes, Denise, can you perhaps minute? We you know we need to do something more of a meal and a and a box disco um, for the Christmas party. And that's one we need to talk to James about. Or oh, maybe Bistro Live. Yes, yeah, potentially. Yeah. Okay. We'll raise that our next committee meeting in a couple of weeks, a few weeks time. Um, anything else from anybody else? I would just like to thank you. Oh, Michelle. Oh, sorry, Simon. Sorry, Simon Stephen. Thank you, Steve. Thank you, Steve. As I say, it's down to a lot of people. I just want it. Um, but thank you for attending and taking the time to come along this evening. Hope you found some of it interesting. And um, I'm sorry I've gone. 11 minutes over. Um, but thank you. Have a glass of wine. Have a crisp. Um, and thank you. There's nothing in there. On it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.